Hello and welcome to Those Who Can Coach podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Clark. If you're a female soccer player looking to play in the U Sports League or a parent of a female player, have a good listen to today's guest, Vanessa Martinez Lagunas, head coach for the University of Manitoba Bison program. Vanessa is an extremely impressive individual. She's played professionally for the Mexican women's national team. She played top tier division one college soccer. She competed professionally overseas in Europe and then somehow found the time to get the gold standard and coaching license, the UEFA pro license. Have a really good listen to this discussion. This is an incredibly motivated coach in development. I think it would be a really good choice for a lot of players. So have a good listen to our discussion with Vanessa. Vanessa, how are you today? Very good, Ryan. Thank you so much for this invite. Absolutely. Vanessa, your resume as a coach and as a player for that matter is phenomenal. Gosh, I think sometimes I, I've done a few things and I look at your bio and I go, gosh, what have I been doing? I'm lazy compared. I mean, what you've done is so <laughs> impressive. You could literally coach anywhere in the world and, and you have for that matter. You've coached in Germany, in the US, in Mexico, and obviously here in Canada. But one of the funds that I always love the best and, and whenever anybody asks me about yourself and University of Manitoba, any of the families that I'm working with is that we were sitting at a showcase a bunch of years ago and you were just starting your UEFA coaching license. And I asked you about, you said, oh, I'm going to, I'm going next week and flying over to Europe to do my UEFA license. I'm going, wow, that's impressive. And I said, where are you doing that? And you said, oh, I'm doing it in Germany because I wanted to challenge myself and try to do the whole course in German, which is your third or fourth language you speak. And I was like going, gosh, who is this person? I'm like what? Like most people are incredibly <laughs> intimidated by just doing the UEFA license. You said, no, I'm going to do it in my third language. And I said, what's, with, what's that driver that you have to be uh, that challenge? You know, where, where does that come from? Well, Ryan, um, I think it all started how I grew up uh, because, um, as you said, I'm originally from Mexico and I grew up playing with boys, right? Mm -hmm. um, when I started playing, there were no girls playing uh, or it was very difficult to find a, a place to do so. And I have always been a very competitive person and somebody that loves challenges. And actually, when people tell me you can do that, I want to show them that I can. Um, and I think that's how I grew up and, and that has helped me a lot. Um, so as I said, I love challenges. I wanted to learn uh, several languages. Uh, many people, when I started learning German in high school, told me, you're crazy. Why are you in the world learning German? And, um, you know, I have always been a very hard worker. For example, in my high school years, I would go to school from seven to two. Then I had soccer practice from four to uh, six. And then I was learning English seven to eight and then German eight to nine p.m. Imagine that. And those were my three years of, of high school. Right. And people told me, you're crazy. Uh, and I said, well, this is what I love to do. And I know that in the future is going to be very helpful for me. And it was right because it opened so many doors for me that if I had not learned those languages, English, German, and of course, my, of course, my native Spanish, I would have not had the opportunities that I have now. So, um, yeah, I think that's where everything started. And um, I have always enjoyed challenges. And again, I love to show people that uh, great things can be done uh, when uh, many people think or where many people think cannot be done. Well, growing up in Mexico then, did you have this goal of saying, I'm going to move away or did you have a goal of, was that ever part of it? Because obviously you've moved around the world. You know, you've played, played professionally in Germany. You've played top level NCAA division one at the University of Texas in the US. I mean, you have had an, a phenomenal playing career. And then like I said, we'll get into the coaching stuff. But you know, here you are young girl in Mexico, it was that part of your goal or vision of it? Or did that or did it just organically move that way? I always had a dream. Uh, my dream, you know, when I started playing soccer was that I wanted to play for the national team in Mexico. I wanted to represent my country. And when I started playing, there was not even a national team yet or a, a well-established national team. Uh, it had disappeared for several years. Uh, there was a, a national team team in the 70s, and even my, my one of my aunts uh, was part of that team in the 70s. But after that, it disappeared, right, for many, many years. And it was until the late 90s when, um, again, uh, a new women's national team from Mexico started. And when I was 10 years old, I told my parents that one day I would represent Mexico and I would play for the national team. And they told me, Vanessa, but there is no national team right now. And I was like, well, when I grow up, there will be one, you know, and I will play for Mexico. And that was my dream. So basically, that's what drove 
everything I did. And, um, you know, I really enjoyed playing with the boys because he was super competitive and I was always challenged. Of course, physically, they are faster and stronger than us girls, um, especially, you know, once you hit pu puberty, for sure that that makes a huge difference. But it always um, kept me motivated. And then things started happening um, in a way that, you know, I always was looking for environments that will challenge me, that will help me get better and better. So there was a point in Mexico that I was already playing at the highest possible level I could. I was part of the national team. I was playing for the best uh, university team in Mexico. Uh, it's called Tech de Monterrey, Campus Monterrey or Las Borreguitas, if you want to call it that way. Um, they are considered the, the Mexican dynasty in, in university soccer. It's like the North Carolina of the U.S., but in Mexico. Um, so I was already playing for that uh, team. We had already won several national championships. Um, I was named the most valuable player, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, there was a point where I said, what's next for me? What, why should I, what should I do to keep growing and to keep improving? And the answer was to look to play at a higher level where I could still combine my education with with the highest level of the women's game and that's how the idea of uh, going to the U.S. Uh, started um, you know it worked out for me to be able to go to the University of Texas at Austin the Longhorns you know it's a, a wonderful program definitely um, in the 2000, 2002 to 2007 I was there and during these years um, you know Texas had been already in the top uh, 16, sweet 16. Um, so definitely it was a, a really good environment for me, very challenging. You know, definitely when I, I arrived there, many of my, my teammates were members of the youth national teams uh, in the state. So it was a completely different environment. And that's how it started. And then, you know, I wanted more. And after I graduated, I was like, oh, I want to be, you know, I would love to play at the professional level, but always combining education with it. Um, so I always had very clear that education was number my number one priority and soccer was my second one. But I wanted to always combine them. And when I moved to Germany to play professionally, it actually the way that I could do it was combining academics with it. And I got a, a scholarship to do my Ph.D. in Germany. Um, and that's how I was able to finance also my, um, you know, m me moving to Germany and really immersing myself in that culture. But it was because of academics and soccer combined with excellence. Right. And, and that's when I had the great opportunity to try out for Bayern Munich. I was able to play and train with them for about six months. Uh, so I started my PhD and then, you know, destiny always plays a role. And my, my PhD advisor moved to Leipzig. So I had to uh, move with him because my, my scholarship was um, dependent on my supervisor. Uh, so I moved to Leipzig. Uh, of course, I couldn't continue playing with Bayern, but uh, in Leipzig, there was a, another club called Lokomotiv Leipzig, who was playing in the uh, second Bundesliga. So Bayern, of course, was in the first and second Bundesliga. And in Leipzig, I could only play in the second Bundesliga. But it was a fantastic experience. And of course, you know, getting a PhD in sports science makes it even better, right? Because you, you not only get the degree but you learn so many things that help you for life and and that's how I moved from Mexico to the U.S. to Germany and when I finished my PhD and my UEFA Pro license as you mentioned I moved to Canada in 2013. So what so Vanessa you you know here you are playing professionally now you're going to move into the coaching realm at one point you, you must have said okay I'm done with my I've got my fix playing professionally now I want to move into coaching. But again, you've got mm -hmm. degrees, you know, you got PhD, you got your bat, you got all these degrees and certifications. You could go anywhere and you could literally choose anywhere you want to go from what I've seen and from what I know, you know, that that's you can go anywhere in the world. Why choose why why what drew you into coaching? Was it just a natural easy flow because I'm sure you I, you could have been a professor for that matter. What what brought you into the coaching world? Great question, Ryan. Well, my coaching dream started in Texas at the University of Texas at Austin. Um, after my first year at the university, I realized that I was always very intrigued and I wanted to know why my coach was doing what he was doing. My coach at that time was Chris Petruccelli, also one of the best, you know, U.S. university coaches in women's soccer uh, in the country. He had won previously, before he moved to Texas, he had won already a national championship with Notre Dame. Um, so he was a fantastic, or he is a fantastic coach. I learned a lot from him. And, and, and again, I was always intrigued and I wanted to know why and 
why he was doing what he was doing, why his assistant coaches were doing what they were doing. So after my first year, I decided to take my first coaching course uh, through the U.S. Soccer Federation. And I had a fantastic experience. And I realized that when you study the game as a coach, it also helps your game. You know, so that was my first finding. And I was like, I was, this is amazing. The more I know about the game, the better player I become myself, right? Um, so from that moment on, I, I decided to take a coaching course every year. So basically every summer, uh, what I did is I would work the summer camps of, of the university. I will save some money and then I will, I will invest it back in taking coaching courses and I did that for the five years that I was in the U.S. And by the end of that time, I was able to reach the highest coaching license in the U.S. So I got the, the USSFA license and I also got the premier diploma from, from the former NSCAA, NSCA, NSCAA, which is now United Soccer Coaches. And yeah, that's where it started. And when I moved to Germany, you know, I told people that I wanted to pursue the highest coaching license in the world, which is the UEFA Pro Pro license is the most recognized uh, license worldwide. And I wanted to do it in Germany because uh, as of right now, and you know this uh, very well, um, the German coaching academy is one of the most recognized worldwide and also is one of the most difficult ones in the world because it's only offered in German, so they don't offer it in English. Um, so you need to learn the language to be able to take that license. And it takes a full year of a study full time. So, yeah, I was um, I was on that path. And again, many people told me that was impossible. And that motivated me even more to show them that it was possible, you know, as a woman, as a foreigner, you know, that you, you German is my third language. And also going through a very, very, I don't know, competitive process for selection. Every year for the UEFA Pro License in Germany, there are over 100 applications and there are only, I don't know, 15 somewhere in their spaces right and of course for for women the slots or the spaces are even more limited and um yeah i had to go through the whole testing admissions testing uh, written tests practical tests um psychological interviews like all these things but you know that drive and that dedication and hard work definitely helped me to to get there and be one of the selected coaches for for the license that's amazing you know you think of that Plus, and you're on your own too. It's not like you're traveling around with a group. Like you, you're doing all this traveling by yourself as an individual. You know, showing up into whether it's coaching licenses or onto these different teams. It's you know, you've done this, going on your own, having to, and, and all the social components that go with that. Like when you get there, you've got to meet people and network and 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 yes. fit into the group. And I imagine that probably helps you in relation to your players when they're coming to play for at university, because obviously people will come from out of province or out of country to come play for your university team. And I am sure you can easily then relate to them saying, hey, I can relate to homesickness or having to f socialize and fit in. And here's how you go about it. And I'm sure you'd kind of cheerlead that to say this is a good growing opportunity for you. Yes, yes. And I think that's one of my biggest strengths, you know, that I've been on the shoes of the players. I know exactly what it is to be a student athlete, you know, and how you have to combine both your academics, your soccer and your personal life and also how it is to start in a new place. You know, I've done it now several times. So the first time I moved to the U.S., of course, it was super challenging. Uh, I was still kind of uh, mastering the language. I couldn't understand everything that my coaches and my teammates were saying yet or I would you know confuse things here and there but they were always super supportive with me and um, yes I definitely know I can help them you know through the process um, but what I always tell them that uh, basically my my secrets right of, of how to get adapted to a new environment is number one being very passionate about what I what I do and really you know having that love for the game has taken me very far and secondly, always immersing myself into the culture or into the environment that I am in. I know that it's not the task of the people around me to do that, right? It's my task and I, t I need to take that responsibility to fit in, to be proactive, to get to know people. For me, that's the biggest, biggest advice I would give to girls coming to a new environment, either, you know, a new province, a new team or even a new country. You need to take the responsibility. You need to be the proactive one to um, meet the people, to win their trust, to win their respect. Um, so it's your responsibility and not the people around you who have to, to do that for you. 
Agreed. Yeah, and in the role that I play, that's one of the things I always relay to the players as they're moving on to their transition is, is yeah, it's on you to go fit in and, and find a way. Don't expect just, I mean, there'll be support systems for you, but it's part of your job and part of your duty to go and find a way to fit in and network and be part of the team. Don't just uh, sit back and hopefully just get spoon fed yes. to you. I, I agreed yes. completely. You know, yes. you think and about, if you do it, yeah. sorry, right. No. And if you do it, if you do that, you know, if you take that responsibility and you do everything what is within your control to make it happen, it usually happens or maybe 95% of the times it happens, right? Um, so it, it really depends on you. And, and that's a huge, huge advice I would give to young players. Vanessa, when I look at your, again, looking at this phenomenal resume that you have again as a player and as a coach and you have again certifications and you could coach anywhere in the world and i don't just mean being the third assistant you could be the head coach anywhere in the world at professional level at the college level at the youth level whatever level it is you've got the credentials and the background to and languages to do it what brought you to manitoba you know you again great people great place great university but obviously you have options. You, you're someone who's going to have options for the rest of their coaching career. As long as you want to coach, I can see open doors for you wide open wherever you want to go to. But you chose University of Manitoba. What brought you to University of Manitoba? Thanks, Ryan. Um, yeah, well, as you said, um, you know, the UFO Pro license is the highest coaching license in the world. And it um, it qualifies you to coach any national team, any professional team at, in the women's or in the men's game. Right. Um, and I definitely had several offers uh, when I finished, especially for national teams. Uh, but I was attracted to the college, um, to the college environment, because as I told you, I have always been a lover of uh, combining academics and sport, and in my case, soccer with excellence. And I want to show people that, um, you know, when you combine both, um, you can have many more opportunities and, and of course, more stability. Uh, as a player, I, as a player, I always chose both uh, because I knew if I would go only through the soccer path, you know, um, I always tell people and especially young players that the soccer career of a player is ephemeral. That means that can end at any time, right? Without notice. Um, an injury can happen. Um, many things that are completely out of your control can get in the way. Um, and if you have an education, that's your life insurance. That's your life insurance and is what is going to take you, um, you know, far as well when, you're, when your um, playing years are over. And in addition to being a coach and being a player, I am also, I love teaching and I love research. That's why I also went all the way to do a PhD in sports science. Of course, I've always loved the, um, you know, the sports area, the physical area or the exercise physiology area. And um, that's why I chose college uh, soccer. And here at the University of Manitoba, I was finishing my, my pro license. I was looking, you know, at the different options I would have afterwards. And then I learned about this opportunity. I did a lot of research. You know, I did first, I, of course, I started about uh, finding out more about Canada as a country, um, then more about Manitoba as a province, and then very specifically about the city of Winnipeg and, and the University of Manitoba. And the more research I did, the more I realized that it was a wonderful place to be. And I came to my interview. They brought me all the way from Germany. And when I met the people here, you know, from the administrators to the current team at that time, to the other coaches that are working here, I was like, oh my gosh, these people are amazing. Now I understand why they say friendly Manitoba, right? <laughs> because when I arrived, everybody was very, very friendly and they were always re uh, ready to help. I also saw great potential in Canadian players. Uh, overall, I think Canadian players are very athletic have a lot of potential and it was um you know it was not an exception at the university level we had some really good players with amazing potential and i realized that i i really needed to work with them especially in the technical aspects and the tactical aspects of the game to help them keep improving so i definitely saw a huge difference from the german players or the mexican players that I had worked with previously. And and yeah, so the university also offers uh, amazing facilities. Um, uh, I don't know if you have been uh, on campus, uh, Ryan, yet? It's, it's a few years ago, but I have been. I haven't been recently, but a few year, bunch of years back I have been, yeah. Okay, so just since 2013, okay, so when I arrived, um, they were just opening the brand new investors group field which was used for the FIFA Women's World Cup here in Canada in 2015. 
So we have a World Cup stadium right in the middle of our campus. It's where the U.S. national team played all their games during the World Cup. Uh, it's a beautiful, amazing facility. Then we have two turf fields next to each other where we train. We have a full indoor facility to train during the winter. And in 2015, a brand new active living center was built, winning some of the best uh, architectural and, and design prizes in North America. Um, so we have a, a soccer paradise. You know, I call it a soccer paradise. And, and the other big reason I came was because I knew coaching a college team you can have a bigger impact on the players' lives, right? You can definitely be a mentor. You can definitely be a guide for them. Uh, I can coach them over five years. You know, each of my athletes, if, you know, they all uh, finish their degrees. I can coach them for five years. I can definitely make a bigger impact on, on their lives. And also I can coach them every day, you know, if, if, if I want and if they want. So um, definitely that's what I wanted. I, you know, as a young coach, I had a lot of or I have still a lot of energy I want to keep learning and I learn from my from my players every day and those were some of the reasons why I, I chose to to coach at the university level rather than a national team or professional level and of course at the professional level when I, I took this decision there were not many professional leagues yet around right of course now they are increasing but I, I guess the environment is still very unstable. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that because obviously, as you mentioned, you get to them in their formative years, you know, they're young adults just becoming, you know, you're getting them out of their youth careers and into their formative years as they're becoming adults and you get to help shape them. And it's, that's why I always find that, you know, having the coach at this, at this phase is so important is not just a coach for on pitch, but that'll help guide you and prepare you for whatever's next in your, in your world journey. That's why it's great yes. to have someone like with your experience that can guide them. What do you see? Why do people choose? I mean, there's obviously, if I'm going to choose, if my daughter's going to choose University of Manitoba, obviously yourself as a coach, but what are some of the other reasons why people might choose University of Manitoba? Well, um, another big reason is, as you mentioned, I, I focus a lot on uh, using soccer as a platform for teaching life, life skills, right? So for me, it's not only about teaching the players to play the sport or play the game, but more importantly, to teach them skills and values that are going to help them for the rest of their life. And that's my biggest um, focus. And that's what makes me even more happy, right? When I see some of our former players being very successful and, and guiding them, um, mentoring them, you know, as much as, they, as I can in the different aspects of their life. And I really, really aim to have a, a strong, strong relationships with our, with our student athletes and their families. And I think that also comes from my Mexican heritage, because in Mexico, family, you know, the family feel the family unit is crucial and and that's something we we are uh, developing here so people when they come to the University of Manitoba or they come to a camp they realize about that right away you know we are a family we are super tight you know not only with the players but with their parents and the whole families even if they are local if they are um, you know, from other provinces in Canada or if they are international, because that's another huge advantage uh, we have here. Through my international contacts, we have been able to recruit players from all different levels, right? From the local level to the national level to the international level. I know their families as good as, um, you know, as, as if they were local players. So I definitely build strong relationships, not only with the players, but with the with their parents and and their immediate family, for sure. Where do you see the vision? Where's the program going right now? You're obviously you you're you're building up the program. You've you're there long enough now that's becoming your own program, and and you're clearly seen as the leader of that program. Where do you see it going now? What's what's the goal in the next bunch of years here? Yes, Ryan. So since I came in 2013, we have a very clear vision, and that vision is to become one of the best women's soccer programs in the country. And of course, I know it takes. Um, you know, it takes time. It takes uh, several years, but I think we're going in the right direction. So um, if you see, if you go and look at the standings and statistics of the previous seven years, you will find that every single year since 2013, we have achieved something we had not achieved before. Right. So we have improved um, step by step each year. Um, now we have qualified to the playoffs in the last five consecutive years. In 2016, we made it to the Select Six tournament. So 
In 2017, we won the bid to host the national championship for the first time ever in the history of the of the competition. It was the first time ever that was hosted here in the premise, and and people realize, you know that there is so much potential here because first of all, we are right in the middle of the country. So the ge- geographical location is great. We use our indoor facility to host the, the tournament. And also people realize that using indoor facilities of that nature, you know, full size uh, fields with all the amenities you can imagine uh, was amazing, right? Because all the games were uh, very, they were played in very uh, standard conditions. And of course, we host nationals in November. So in most parts of the country, the weather is not cooperating very much or it's very cold and, and many, many things can happen. But people realize that it's possible. And it was actually, we made history because it was the first time that a national youth sports championship was hosted indoors. Then in 2019, we achieved the best divisional ranking. And just last year, uh, we achieved the best overall team record in almost the best uh, overall record in program history. We were just one win behind when Desiree Scott was still part of our program. So definitely, you know, we're making big steps, but um, there is still a lot of room of improvement. And as I said, our vision is to become, you know, one of the best uh, programs in the country. Vanessa, who do you emulate from a coaching standpoint? Is there a coach nationally or around North America? You mentioned your university coach that your University of Texas was a big mentor of yours. Who else do you, or is there anyone in the in the game now today as well on the professional side or on the national team side that you look up to and say, I try to emulate or I, I or I take or borrow things from them to insert into the way that I coach my team? Yes, definitely. I have I have many mentors, uh, Ryan, and people that I've learned uh, from from the years. I will definitely not be able to list all of them, but I will tell you some of the of the ones that I've been closer to. So uh, another one is Anson Dorrance. Um, definitely, I admire Anson very much. Um, At University of North Carolina. Yeah, from the University of North Carolina. Um, when I was at Texas, I worked two camps with him. You know, I work at his summer camps and I've always admired his style and I've learned a lot from him. And of course, his philosophy, you know, and how he runs the program and how he has built a dynasty of that nature in the in the college um, environment in the in the U.S. And then I also admire Ralph Peta, who was my my mentor in Germany. He was the uh, head coach of the under 17 German national team and also my my instructor for the uh, UEFA A license. Then I had the opportunity to work with him for about two years and a half as an assistant coach in the under-17 German national team. And I learned so much from him. You have no idea how much I learned learn from him. He's one. He's considered one of the best tactical minds in the German game. And he has developed most of the national, most of the current national champion, uh, national Players in Germany, women's national team players in Germany, were developed by Ralph Peta. Um, so definitely he's another big mentor. And from the women's side, of course, I have a great role model, and her name is Pia Sonhage. Of course, probably you know of her, but she was the former coach of the U.S. national team, won two gold medals with the U.S., and she's now coaching Brazil. And I can guarantee you that very soon Brazil will be an Olympic champion as well, or or World Cup champion, because she's an amazing coach and 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 also an amazing person. So I really admire her. No, I really admire her knowledge, her passion for the game, and the strong relationships she's able able to build with her players. What else do you see in your career going forward? Then too, I mean, you can obviously the Bison Athletic Department is is phenomenally fortunate to have you there. Do you see yourself maybe getting into national team coaching in the future, or do you want to just uh, no? I want to focus right in on college and and not get distracted by anything else. Or is it? Hey, I'd also like to be involved at the national coaching level. Right now, I you know I'm of course open to to different opportunities. Um, I feel that right now, you know, my husband and I are super happy right now here in in Manitoba. Uh, we love the environment. We love uh, the impact we are having in this program and the players we're bringing here. What I would love to do in the future is if I could combine, you know, and I know that many coaches in the U.S. have done this before, where, you know, they coach the university, but they get involved with the national program uh, somehow, because that's another big advantage here at the university environment that, um, you know, I am super flexible. Basically, I control my schedule outside the competitive season. 
and um, I would love to combine it, you know, if if I can, serving or helping um, the national teams at some point here in Canada if possible. But as of right now, you know, I'm really happy uh, here and, and building this program and, and helping Manitoba and helping the university to to become a recognized and and one of the best programs in the in the nation. Vanessa, when you get off the field and you get away, because I'm appreciating that college coaching, you're you're it's all year round job between budgeting and recruiting and and putting your camps together, and you're always and as for you, you're always learning too. When you get away, what do you like to dive into, or is it just hey, I want to study more and get get more into textbooks? <laughs> you know, I've seen talk to NFL coaches and other groups like that who's like they they never get away from it. They're, if they're if they're not active, they're out there trying to learn something. But or is there something you do when you have okay, it's my time? What do you try to get into? Yes, I definitely want to. I love and aim to keep a balance for sure because I know that keeps me stronger. It also helps me to be a good role model for for our student athletes. But I love I love the ho- a holistic approach, right? I I like to keep learning, of course, because uh, personal development is for life. Um, but I love, for example, um, music. I love to play the piano, so that's you know something that I definitely do during my free time. And that helps me to uh, channel some of my energy to something different, uh, to relax, to, you know, to find my place, right? To, to be myself and, and, and to do something different than soccer. And I also love to take care of myself, right? And exercise and show athletes that once you, once you learn the discipline of being a, a high performance athlete, you can keep that for life, right? And actually when I don't work out, you know, I feel weird. I feel uh, in a bad mood or I, I don't feel myself. So I also want to show the athletes that uh, once you become a high performance athlete and you learn all the benefits that that brings to your body, to your mind, um, you want to do that for the rest of your life. Right. And it definitely helps you to to live a better life and, a, and with a healthier lifestyle as well. Music are you listening to? So if you you said piano, so are you, is there a, are you listening to a lot of classic music uh, when you're on your got we you got your iPhones or your i I guess what earbuds yes, on? Or, yes. Yeah. I, I love classical music, so I'm a big fan of of um, uh, Sebastian Johann Sebastian Bach. Of course, I I live in Germany and I actually live in the city from Johann Sebastian Bach in Leipzig. He grew up there and and uh, and he was the main pianist of the of the local church. Um, and then, of course, I love Beethoven, Mozart. So, yeah, those are my three big ones. Uh, and I imagine when you walk into the locker room and pregame, you're not going to be putting on any, cla- at least your team's probably not going to let you put on any classical music before they're oh, about no, to get no, ready no. for the field. I'm assuming they've got control of the music at that point. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. They, you know, that time is a, a time of getting pumped and getting very inspired. So they control all the all their music. And I am, you know, of course, I love classical, but I hear or I listen to all types of music and I'm pretty easy going on that. So I actually love their music. You know, once they select every year, they select their team list or their playing list, their team playing list. And and I love, love them. Actually, when I'm working out, I listen to their music. Oh, really? So you, you've adapted, yeah. so you, can, you can sing along with them, so to speak. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So I, I definitely let them control. And actually, they keep me updated, right? And, and, and definitely up to date of what's, what's the, the music to, to hear at the moment. Last couple of questions here, Vanessa. What type of player are you looking for? Like, I'm, I'm obviously, best talent or, you know, and position specific stuff but what are when you're out recruiting and you're recruiting across the country what are you looking for what are a couple things that that player should have that'll be successful in your specific program like you're going to know the type of player that's going to come there and stay at university of manitoba because it's not just about getting there it's about staying there and graduating as you've mentioned which is highly important for you what what are some of the intangibles that you're looking for the most the two most important ones for me are one is passion you know, without the love of the game, um, they cannot get anywhere. Uh, because as soon as they look at, you know, the game or training or, or everything they need to do as a student athlete, if they look at it as a, as a, I don't know, duty rather than a hobby, something they love to do, then it's, it's, it's not very efficient. Um, so love for the game, passion for the game. And the second one is uh, the willingness to put the extra work that is required to get to the next level. I've always, I always tell my athletes that what is going to separate them, you know, from 
uh, the rest of the players is how much time they spend on their own to get better. You know, I can definitely guide them, help them. But at the end of the day is how much more they want to do, you know, and if they are willing to, okay, take advantage of, you know, the um, 10, 15 minutes before practice or 10, 15 minutes after practice to work on something they need to improve on. Um, those are the athletes that, you know, really get far and, 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 and achieve their dreams. And that's what you're looking for when you're out there. So if I have my daughter's looking, I got to know that, or I got to at least look inside or talk to her about saying she needs these credentials in order to play for your program. Yes, of course. And of course, all the, um, the, the position is specific, you know, technical, tactical, physical, like they have to be strong in every, everything, every, um, every single pillar of the game, they need to be strong, right? I always look for that holistic approach. But if you ask me about two intangibles that I look for will be the passion and will be um, the willingness to put the extra work that will separate them from the rest. I agree. That that always shows you if they're off doing it on their own. That'll that'll tell you a lot right away. Versus yeah. the ones who hey when the when you say practice is over and they walk off the pitch, you know, they kind of shows exactly. you something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Vanessa, this has been phenomenal. And again, I think what you've done in your career is, I mean, as an example, I hope, gosh, I hope one day my daughter could have a resume even half as good as yours. I mean, you make us all look pedestrian compared to <laughs> what the accomplishments <laughs> no, no, no. that you've done. And I think, you know, it's gonna be fun following your career because I think, you know, if you stay at the University of Manitoba the rest of your career, hey, great, lucky for them. And I think you've mm -hmm. got uh, endless opportunities, but thank you for your time here today and uh, look forward to chatting with you again and seeing you at our next uh, tournament we have. Or, and uh, But again, thanks again for being with us today. Thank you so much, Ryan, and I wish you all the best, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Awesome.